Ladies and gentlemen, let us discuss the PlayStation 4's audio chip. So, we've known that the PlayStation 4 has had some type of audio chip in it for a while, and now it has been confirmed that the PlayStation 4's audio chip is actually based on AMD's True Audio DSP. So this video, we're going to be uh, doing a quick news thing on this and just reporting the basics as it's pretty late here in the UK. But I will be doing full coverage on this, including an article, a breakdown with slides and everything else in the next day, probably tomorrow. So this is going to be a quick report. But basically speaking, this is pretty damn great for not only the PlayStation 4, as it turns out, but for PC gamers as well. It's actually unsurprising to me that the PlayStation 4's audio DSP is pretty damn similar in terms of capabilities to AMD's True Audio. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with True Audio, it's actually in the later um, Volcanic Island uh, GPUs, for example, the R9 290 and R9 290X. One of the primary reasons behind this is that the CPU is not exactly what you would want to do most of your audio processing on. In effect, it actually is quite hungry uh, audio on its CPU resources. And so what happens effectively is it's basically taking away resources that you could be using for things such as physics and AI and um, just general main game program stuff. In other words, basically running the game's bloody engine. When you consider as well, that the CPU is also responsible for pretty much giving draw calls to the GPU, in other words, basically telling it what the hell it has to render and so on, then you can imagine how quickly the budget, in other words, the CPU budget, which, you know, remember, there's there's a finite amount of CPU cycles, right? Um, a CPU, even a, even a multi-core one, such as the one inside the PlayStation 4, it it can only handle a certain amount of instructions at once. Now, the PlayStation 4's CPU is an AMD Jaguar, but despite the fact that it technically has uh, eight cores, uh, that's four cores over two modules, six of those are available at the moment anyway for games. However, if you were to look at interviews from Microsoft and even Sony, you'll have noticed a pretty recur a pretty obvious and recurring pattern, and they've said, the games, well, the games developers have said, that effectively uh, audio on the previous generation, Xbox 360, for example, actually took up one to two uh, hardware threads on the CPU. So that's pretty expensive. So the idea behind the audio uh, DSP is to basically offload that. In theory, this will mean that we're going to be able to have a much more advanced sound effects than if they were being calculated on the CPU. Because if you're a sound engineer and you're working on a game, you have to be mindful of how many sound assets you can have and how many sound sources you can have being played at the same time. So, pretty obvious thing, but for example, 3D audio is more taxing than, say, just regular 2D sound. And the higher the quality of the bit rate of, say, a sample or an audio track, the more it takes in terms of resources, and we're not just talking about memory here, but actually processing time. So the basic premise is that, like this, you're going to have more resources available for the CPU, but also, in addition to all of this, you're actually going to have better sounding audio. You're going to be able to have a much cleaner audio and much more advanced audio. Now, audio on the PC, as I'm sure some of you may be aware, actually kind of hit a lull. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, there was actually a really big surge of it. That actually was keeping up with 3D graphics for quite a while. I remember pretty much every PC magazine or website was talking about the new uh, 3D sound cards that were popping up. But then it started to slow down and most people just stuck with an onboard sound card. There were numerous issues behind this, but it really hasn't really hasn't improved. So one ideal aspect of this from PC gamers is that it could also help forge maybe a good API and a good relationship with games developers with a dedicated audio processor in games. As I said, the PlayStation 4 does definitely have quite a lot of similarities with the Volcanic Islands. It actually has 
pretty much the compute structure of the Volcanic Island GPU, despite that the actual graphics part is pretty much the same, but the, the actual um, way it deals with compute commands is very much like the Volcanic Islands. Anyway, as I said, this has been a pretty short video because I still have a lot to do, but tomorrow should be a long-ass article on this. I'm also going to be discussing things such as Mantle, hopefully tomorrow, and a few other bits and bobs besides that I've been planning on because now there's been a lot of uh, movement on this. So I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.